Hi, I'm Andrew Cunningham for Ars Technica, and today we are going to take a look at the touch bar on the new MacBook Pro. This replaces the row of function keys that Mac keyboards have used up until now. By default, you've got like an escape key over here. You've got the control strip over here, which is some like common system controls for like brightness and muting and Siri. And you can also expand that or customize it to do different stuff, which is kind of handy. And then in this big middle section here, as you use different apps, the system is going to give you like different buttons and controls and stuff that you can use. And um, this like jumps around really quickly and seamlessly as you switch apps. So like when you switch your focus to photos, like you get the controls for photos, you can do some adjusting of color with the little buttons and sliders that they give you to play with. It's very iOS-y or watch OSE. Developers will need to build support for this into their apps. Most of Apple's built-in apps do support it. So like here's Safari, we've got buttons for uh, navigation. Um, you can see previews of some of your tabs here and you can like switch between them just by tapping them. And you can see the, you know, the performance is, is pretty good. I haven't noticed any like lag or slowness or jankiness to the, to the graphics. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that. When you want to change things like brightness and volume, you can press the button and then engage with the slider, or you can press and hold the button and then just slide your finger right where it is. Apple's made it smooth and like matte to match the keys better. It's not sort of grippy and, and glossy like a touch screen on an iPhone or an iPad is. More apps like the terminal has touch bar controls, which is which is nice. You can you know, change the, the color on the screen here if you want to. It's, it, it's mostly like, you, I don't think you're going to see any apps like running on the touch bar. What Apple recommends you use it for is mostly buttons and shortcuts and then sliders for certain things like when, when appropriate. Here's like text edit. Um, when you get certain like system dialog boxes, it will give you some buttons that you can press. It's just all context dependent, like whatever app you're using, whatever you're doing, the touch bar changes and it, shift, it shifts views to like give you more stuff to do than a function row would. If there's one problem with it, I think it's that it's, you know, there's no feedback at all. It's not, a phys there are no physical buttons, like for touch typists who are never gonna like look at their hands on the keyboard very often. It's like, especially with the buttons changing and stuff all the time, it, it is hard to just touch type on this thing. Um, so you do kind of have to maybe take a break from what you are doing if you're gonna play around with it a lot. But most of the stuff that Apple is doing, like you've got the typing suggestions here, like pretty similar to iOS. Probably not gonna use them too often, but it does do some emoji stuff, which is nice. And then um, if you're typing, you can also bring up this little emoji picker that they've, they've built in, which is, which is kind of cool. So like, the apps decide what the touch bar looks like, but developers can give you some like customization options. So like the finder. So you can do stuff like create a new folder or move files or make a new window or a new tab or move, move stuff to the trash. It gives you keyboard based shortcuts for a lot of stuff that either you would have to do with um, like a command, like a key combination, or um, you would have to do with the trackpad. And so it can, like depending on what you do and what apps you're using, it can save you some time. So you just grab a button and then you can also see, since I'm in editing mode right now, the buttons are kind of shaking a little bit like they do on an iPhone when you're moving apps around, which is a nice like visual note to, to let you know that yeah, things are being edited right now. Uh, so I'll hit done. And now whenever I'm using the finder, I've got these buttons. And they go away when I go into photos or any other app, then come back when I'm in the finder. If you want function keys, you just hold down the function key and it gives you the standard row of them, same as you would get on any other Apple laptop. And then the last thing that it does is over here on the right is the Touch ID fingerprint sensor. So for certain like system dialog boxes where it would ask you to type in your password, like to install an app or to confirm something. Sometimes you can use Touch ID for that. You can use it to 
unlock the laptop. So I've just locked it right here and then you see this little display pop up that tells you, okay, yeah, you can unlock it with Touch ID if you want. We'll do that. And the Touch ID button also supports Apple Pay in Safari, which is something that you normally need a phone or a watch with Apple Pay set up on it to do. So you just tap the button, the window comes down to prompt you, and if you can pay with Touch ID, uh, you get prompted and you put your fingerprint in, it processes, and it's done. So that's kind of cool. Might save you from having to create a million accounts on different online shopping sites. The more I've used the Touch Bar, the more I've become convinced of its potential usefulness. It's, it's going to depend on developers picking it up. Like right now, I use like mostly Chrome and Slack and a couple of other apps that haven't been updated. And so the bar just kind of sits there a lot of the time. But if you use Apple's built-in apps primarily, or if you wait a while, uh, I think you'll start to see a lot more developers having cool ideas for what to do with the space and like bringing buttons down here. Some people I think still want a touchscreen on the Mac, but it's a good substitute for that, I think.